Hello dear student. In today's lecture, we will be learning about Bloch's theorem and kronig penny model. So far, we have learned about the free electron model and how free electron model successfully explains the electronic properties, the thermal properties, the magnetic properties and optical properties of metals. And in free electron model, we have considered as electrons moving in a constant potential. Now in today's lecture, we will learn, we will look into how this free electron model structure works or we will look uh, deeply into the crystal structure of the metals so as to understand how these electrons actually work. So we will uh, uh, go into more mathematical, quantum mechanical approach of these, uh, uh, these uh, crystal structures. So, according to free electron model, electrons are moving in a constant potential. That is, as we have already learned, we see electrons moving in a constant potential uh, under the background of ions and the core electrons. So, electrons will occupy a constant potential. So, this is a potential which is occupied by the electrons and this uh, potential is a constant one and the electrons uh, will move in this potential all the electron will behave as free particles as we have seen they behave as ideal gas and they can move freely throughout the metal uh, to and fro so uh, they essentially behave as in a constant potential or no potential now when we consider when we look having a better look into the structure then we can see that uh, let us arrange atoms in a one dimensional array and say this is uh, the ions plus its core electrons so we have already seen in free electron model we consider ions plus core electrons sitting in uh, in free electron model we have considered that ions and core electrons are sitting in the background and the electrons move freely but when we consider a one dimensional array of ions we can see that the electrons are not in a constant potential and uh, we can see that if we draw plot the potential then we can know that there is a potential dip or potential well which is near the ions and there will be a flatter area between the ions and these potentials are becoming periodic just in the case of one dimensional array and they are moving for infinitely long in both sides. So as we can see that these potentials are not constant. These potentials has a dip that is it go deeper when it is near the ions and it is flatter in between the region when there are no ions. So the electrons are not in a constant potential but is in a periodic potential. As we can see that this potential V of X when we plot this as V of X and this V of X is repeating after every interval in X and this interval is equal to the lattice constant A that is in this potential we can write V of X plus A is equal to V of X that is now the electron is considered to be in a periodic potential that is this potential repeats itself after every a so v of x plus a that is potential at this point is seen as if this is x if this is point x then this is point x plus a now the potential at this point is same as the potential at this point Therefore, we can write as V of X plus A is equal to V of X and this potential, the electrons are now moving not in a constant potential as we have seen in the free electron model. It is moving in a periodic potential. Therefore, now we have to think beyond the free electron model to assess how the electrons move in a metal. Now, 
as we have already seen our potential let me draw it once again our potential is not uh, indefinitely deep definitely not indefinitely deep so can make it a square down here now this is my potential and this potential extends from minus infinity to infinity for a one dimensional array and this is my potential so this potential this particular potential has a uh, has a translational symmetry as we know that this potential wells are separated by a distance a so when i move this entire potential translate this entire potential by a distance a the system indeed remains invariant that is if i move this potential to a distance a then also the potential will be same as this uh, extending from minus infinity to infinity that is if i move this potential towards my right side by a distance a the system will not change the system remains invariant so this translational symmetry says me that the uh, probability of finding an electron uh, at uh, that is probability density of finding every particle at a distance a x is same as at a distance x plus a that is probability of finding an electron here is same as probability of finding an electron here probability of finding an electron here is same as the probability of finding an electron here so at every distance a at every separation a the probability of finding a particle will be same so probability of finding a particle is being given as in quantum mechanically we write rho of x where rho is the particle density we know that particle density is calculated as the mode of a wave function square the particle density at the place x is equal to particle density at the point x minus a is equal to particle density at the point x plus a so the uh, when uh, this is x the probability of finding a particle here is same as probability of finding a particle at x minus a and probability of finding a particle at x plus a and this comes out from the translational symmetry translation means moving dear children hope you remember translation means moving so translational symmetry means a symmetry which is kept intact while translation that is while moving just like a rotation we say it has a symmetry rotation bod, uh, rotational body has rotational symmetry that is body remains intact after rotation just like that this system has a translational symmetry that is the system will remain intact even after a translation now quantum mechanically we uh, get the probability density as mod psi square where psi is the wave function of the electron in this region the if psi is a wave function of the electron in the system then mod psi square can give me the probability density it, we have seen this in our quantum mechanic course so i can also write mod psi of x minus a square will be equal to mod psi of x plus a square now if mod psi of x square is equal to mod psi of x plus a square what can i get as an inference from this i can say that psi of x plus a will be equal to some phase constant e raised to i phi of a any function which is a, a a function of a into psi of x now how can i write this 
I can write this because the function which I have taken here, the function which I have taken here as e phi of x turns out to be 1 when I take its mod. That is mod of e raised to i phi of x, phi of x, phi of a. Phi of a is another uh, function. We will look into phi of a in detail. A mode of e raised to phi of a. When I take mode square of this, what will happen is e raised to, this will give me e raised to minus i phi of a. This is what we do mathematically. e raised to i phi of a. So, e raised to minus i phi of a plus e raised to i phi of a. We know that a raised to x plus a raised to y is a raised to x plus y and this will give you e raised to 0 and that is equal to 1. Therefore, we can write a phase constant here. We can assume that if mode of two functions are equal, uh, mode square of two functions are equal, then they are related by a phase constant and that is e raised to i phi of a and phi of a is any uh, constant function which is a function of the lattice constant a. Hope you are clear with this. I am moving on. Now let us find what is the form of phi of a. So what we have is psi of x plus a have to be equal to e raised to i phi of a into psi of x. This is what we have got from the translational symmetry of one dimensional array potential. Now let us find what is the structure of i phi of a. To find the structure of i phi of a, here I am calculating psi of x plus 2a. Now according to the above equation I can write uh, i of x plus 2a as e raised to i phi of 2a into psi of x. Let it be equation number a. Now I can also write psi of x plus 2a as two different translation that is translation of uh, from x to a first translation and from there x to a uh, uh, that is x plus a to x plus 2a two different translation uh, consecutive translations so what i can write is this is equal to psi of x plus a that is the first translation and again an a. So from this equation from this above equation what I can write is this is equal to e raised to i phi of a into psi of x plus a that is after the first translation. Now after the second translation again I will get e raised to i phi of a this is what i already have into translating this will give me again e raised to i phi of a into psi of x this equation i have written in reference to this function this is for only one translation now i have made two consecutive translations so after every translation i will get a phase factor e raised to phi of a multiplied to my function. So what I get from here is e raised to uh, now e raised to x plus e raised to y. What will we do? x plus y. So what we have is 2i into phi of a. Taking i outside what I can write is 2 into phi of a into psi of x. Let it be equation number b. Now, look at equation number A and equation number B. What can you see? In equation number A and equation number B are essentially the same. So, from this I can write e raised to i 
pi of 2a is equal to e raised to i into 2 phi of a. This implies that phi of 2a is equal to 2 times phi of a. This says me that this phi of a, the function phi of a is a linear function. This says me that phi of a is a linear function of a. When phi of a is a linear function of a, I can write phi of a is equal to some constant into a. Let us check whether it uh, holds the situation. Phi of 2a. Phi of 2a will give you uh, k into 2a and that will be equal to 2 times k. So the, uh, this happens only with a linear function. So phi of a should be a linear function and I have written it as some uh, k, some constant k into a. So, I can replace phi of a with k into a and the equation, the first equation which we have derived from translational symmetry can be rewritten as psi of x plus a is equal to e raised to i k instead of phi of a I have written k into psi of x. So, phi, uh, this is the form of phi of a. Now, I have, I can rewrite this equation as, this above equation as, psi of x is equal to e raised to i k x into u k of x, where this function, u k of x is a periodic function. Our psi of x was not a periodic function. But we needed a periodic wave function. So we introduce a periodic wave function u k of x such that psi of x is equal to e raised to i k x into u k of x. So this u k of x is a periodic function where u k of x plus a is equal to u k of x. That is the wave function at this point and the wave function at this point also the wave function of this point will be similar with a phase with a phase difference which is equal to e raised to i k x so it is the main difference so u uh, k that is wave function at x plus a will be equal to wave function at x therefore psi of x plus a will be equal to e raised to x plus a plus u k of x plus a which is again equal to u k of x. Therefore, wave function at the similar uh, at other regions will be similar to each other. Therefore, the structure of the wave function will be of the form psi k of x will be equal to e raised to i k x in the u k of x where u k of x is a periodic function. Periodic function with a periodicity a. Therefore, this uh, section actually tells us that if we have a potential, if we have a periodic potential such that v of x plus a is equal to v of x, then the then we will obtain a Schrodinger wave function such that it will also be periodic with a phase difference e raised to i k x. And this theorem is known as the Bloch's theorem. So Bloch's theorem tells us that in a periodic potential v of x plus a is equal to v of x then the wave function will be of the form u k of x is equal to e raised to i k x into sorry psi k of x will be equal to e raised to i k of x into u k of x where u k of x is a periodic function. We can write the same equation in three dimensional 
and this uk of x will have a periodicity periodicity of uk of x will be equal to the lattice constant Because here we are talking only about one dimensional, so the lattice constant is A. Now I can talk about in three dimension also, that is uh, instead of considering one dimensional array, now I consider cells, unit cells. So uh, psi k of R, that is R is, you know, it is xi plus yj plus zk. We are considering a position vector r is equal to e raised to ik. Here k will also have three different components in x, y and z direction and it can be written as e raised to i into k dot r uk of r and this function uk of r will have a periodicity with uh, the primitive lattice vectors. So this uh, uk of r will be periodic with the primitive lattice vectors. Now we will see how we can use this Bloch's theorem to solve how, uh, elect, uh, how energy bands arises in uh, metals. We have already seen that we have valence band, we have conduction band and we have uh, different energy bands. In our previous lectures we have seen that we have different energy bands and this energy bands indeed tells us what a metal, uh, what a material is. If the material is a conductor, an insulator or a semiconductor. These are always defined by these energy bands and their relations and their gaps between them. So uh, this Croning penny model actually tells us how these energy bands arises in a metal or in any material, how these energy bands arises. So to solve Croning penny model, we have to use this block theorem. Kronig penny model is solved using simple potential well and solved using quantum mechanics. It is a quantum mechanical theory and we uh, solve it using a simple periodic potential wells, square potential wells and we also use Bloch's theorem. So it is a one dimensional study of how bands arises in a crystal. Now to solve this, we solve the Schrodinger wave equation of the electrons when the electrons move through this potential. We have seen the potential before. So we anticipate the potential to be of the form of a square well. We have already seen it somewhat like a square well. So uh, we have our ions sitting here at the wells and we have walls uh, that is distance between two wells and these walls have a distance A and these wells have a distance B. Now these wells have a height V0 and uh, we have a ground it is at 0. So this is the potential well here we have V and in this direction we have x. So this is a potential well and our ions are sitting in the well and the electrons will experience a negative potential or less potential uh, in the area potential pull in the area where electrons is, or the ions are here and not much in the area where there are uh, no uh, particle to pull them closer to. So we will, we are having a periodic potential. So this potential is being repeated after every uh, every a plus x uh, a plus b every a plus b. This potential is repeating. This uh, potential is being repeating at this point. So in every a plus b. This potential is repeating. So the periodicity of this potential is now A plus B. 
Now we have to solve uh, this Rodinger wave equation of the electrons which are passing through these potential. So effectively we have here two different two different regions and these two different regions are uh, moving uh, are being repeated. So we will solve this for these two different regions. Now let us start solving for this. After solving the equation we will get us uh, these two different equation for two different region. So let me show for instance how we can solve this. You already know how to solve this because we are done this in our uh, quantum mechanical classes. So this is distance A and this is my region number 1 and this is my region number 2. So region number 2, in region number 2 I have a well and region number 1 is the wall. So for solving let me consider I need a reference point for solving. So I take this as x is equal to 0. Let this be x is equal to 0. So I take this point as x is equal to 0. So this point is x is equal to a and this point is x is equal to a plus b. Now let me solve the Schrodinger wave equation for the first region. For the first region I have a potential V is equal to V0 and I assume my energy E to be less than V0. Uh, that is E to be less than V0. E is passing within this V0. So now let me solve this. My Schrodinger equation is H cross square by 2M. Oh, sorry H cut square by 2M for you d square psi by dx square plus v0 psi is equal to e psi. So how can I solve this? I can solve this like that. Minus h cut square by 2m d square psi by dx square is equal to e minus v0 into psi but i know that e is less than v0 so i can write it as minus of v0 minus e so that this quantity v0 minus e will be always positive so i have two negative signs here i can essentially cut this off and bring this 2m by h cross square to this side and write d square psi by dx square is equal to 2m divided by h cross square just by cross multiplying nothing more e0 sorry v0 minus e into psi. Now I bring all these to my LHS and write d square psi by dx square minus 2m by h cross square into v0 minus e psi is equal to 0. Now we have an equation of the form d square psi by dx square minus alpha square psi is equal to 0. Now how can we solve this function? You already know this function. This is a second order differential equation. So the solution for this function can be written so as you can see we have a negative sign here right if we have a negative sign here then our functions will be of the form e raised to minus alpha x and e raised to plus alpha x right so our function solution for psi of uh, x so therefore for psi so the solution of psi of x will be some constant into e raised to alpha x alpha because i have chosen this function to be alpha alpha square so this to all function i have chosen to be alpha square 
that's why it is alpha x because I am differentiating with respect to the variable x plus some other constant into e raised to minus alpha x. This is a solution for this type of second order differential equation. We have learned it already and from this what I have is uh, where uh, and this is for the region this is for the region from 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to a that is this region I'm talking about 0 to a so this is for the function 0 to a and here alpha is equal to root over I have alpha square is equal to this quantity so alpha will be root of that 2m divided by h cross square into v0 minus e and the function within this that is to, uh, v0 minus e is positive so alpha is a real number now let me solve for my second region for my second region I have v is equal to 0. So this is my second region and second region I have no potential. So solving for v is equal to 0 and of course I have e greater than 0. e cannot be less negative because it is in a potential. So uh, e is always greater than 0. And let me write my Schrodinger wave equation h cut square by 2m d square psi by dx square I have no v0 so there will be that term v0 will be equal to 0 so it will be equal to e psi now what can I do I can just reverse this equation bring it over here d square psi by dx square just by cross multiplying what I have is minus 2m by h cut square into e psi so I can bring all these equation to my LHS and write d square psi by dx square plus 2m e by h cut square psi is equal to 0 so this equation is now of the form d square psi by dx square plus some other function say beta square psi is equal to 0. Now I, what I have is a plus sign here. If I have a plus sign here my solution psi of x will be of the form I know you tend to say it is a cos beta x plus b sin beta x but since I have used uh, since I have used exponential functions here I wish to use exponential functions here also but don't worry exponential functions here I am using is let me write it for the first minus uh, sorry plus i beta x plus some constant d into a raised to minus i beta x. So, uh, as you know, e raised to i beta x or e raised to i theta, say, e raised to i theta can be written as cos theta plus i sin theta. And e raised to minus i theta is cos theta minus i sin theta. So the uh, functions of cos and sin is embedded in this e raised to i beta x and e raised to minus i beta x. So it is essentially the same as a cos uh, beta x plus b sin beta x. Just that I have written in terms of exponentials because here I had exponentials. So I wish it uh, both look the same. So I have two different equations. Both are in exponentials. So dear student, just uh, remember that if we have a function, uh, or if we have a differential equation of the form which has a negative sign here, our function, uh, answer our function will be of the form, ex uh, will be either exponentially increasing or exponentially decaying. 
is either the function will be exponentially decaying e raised to minus alpha x or the function will be exponentially increasing as e raised to alpha x or it can be a combination of both or it can be either one of this and if we have a plus sign here our function will be of the form cos theta and sin theta that is our functions will be of the form that is oscillating so these functions are called hyperbolic functions when we have a negative here we have these functions and these are called hyperbolic function because they look like a hyperbola and if we, if we have a plus sign here then we will have oscillatory functions because their values always oscillate so uh, from this we will get two different functions here at the first region we have hyperbolic functions of the form e raised to alpha x and e raised to minus alpha x and in the second region we have oscillatory function of the form e raised to i beta x and e raised to minus i beta x so these are the functions which i have act, uh, after calculating i will get my psi is equal to a e raised to alpha x plus b e raised to minus alpha x in the region 0 to a and c e raised to i beta x plus d e raised to minus i beta x from the region a to a plus b. Now I have found my two different wave functions. Now let me apply boundary conditions. And this is how uh, as we always do in our quantum mechanics systems. First we will find the wave equation then we will apply the boundary conditions. So here uh, along with boundary conditions we have blocks theorem conditions also. So first let us find the boundary condition. So this is our existing boundary and that is at x is equal to 0. So this is our existing boundary and we have another boundary here that is at x is equal to a. So our first boundary condition will be that psi first, the, the first region, this is the first region and this is the second region. So wave function at this region will be same uh, at the boundary the uh, wave function as the first region will be same as the wave function at the second region that is the wave function is always continuous it cannot break uh, through our boundary so wave function have to be always continuous so at this point at this boundary point the wave function at the first region have to be same as wave function at the second region so I can write psi 1 of a have to be equal to psi 2 of a. Now I already know that psi 1 of a is e raised to is of the form a e raised to alpha x plus b e raised to minus alpha x. So psi 1 at x is equal to a will be of the form a e raised to alpha a plus b e raised to minus alpha a. Again we have psi 2 the equation for psi 2 as c e raised to i beta x plus d e raised to minus i beta x. Now psi 2 at x is equal to a will be equal to replacing all these x by a what will we get e raised to i beta a plus d e raised to minus i beta a therefore and uh, from this equation boundary condition this function have to be equal to this function so i can write a e raised to alpha a plus b e raised to minus alpha a is equal to c e raised to i beta a plus d e raised to minus i beta a. Now, not just the functions, the derivative of the functions has also to be continuous at the boundaries. When the boundaries are finite, 
we have a finite boundary here. So when the boundaries are finite, not just the functions but its derivatives. Derivative actually means the slope of the function. So the slopes of the function uh, should also be continuous. So I can write psi dash of the first region at x is equal to a have to be equal to psi dash of the second region at x is equal to a. Now let us find what is psi dash. Let me write the functions again. Psi 1 is equal to a e raised to alpha x plus b e raised to minus alpha x. So, the derivative of this function will be equal to alpha into a e raised to alpha x minus alpha into b e raised to minus alpha x. Because I have this minus alpha as the derivative. So, I can write this is alpha into a e raised to alpha x minus b e raised to minus alpha x. So, psi dash of first region at x is equal to a is essentially alpha into a e raised to alpha e minus b e raised to minus alpha e. Now, psi of the second region. Psi of the second region is c e raised to i beta x plus d e raised to minus i beta x. Therefore, I can find its derivative psi dash at the second region is equal to i beta into c e raised to i beta x because i beta is the constant here and uh, minus i beta d into e raised to minus i beta x. Therefore, I can write it as i beta into c e raised to i beta x minus d e raised to minus i beta x. Now let us find what is psi dash the second region at x is equal to a. What can I do? Essentially replace all x with a. I can get i beta into c raised to i beta a minus d e raised to minus i beta a. So I have two different equations. These two equations are equal to each other uh, with the boundary condition. So, I have these two equations equal to each other and it can be written as alpha into some function is equal to minus i beta into some function. Now, along with the boundary condition, I have also the block theorem to look into. So, Essentially, when I'm looking into the Bloch's theorem, according to the Bloch's theorem, uh, when I have a periodic potential, the wave function at this point, that is wave function at psi is equal to 0 and wave function at psi is equal to A plus B. What is that region? This is wave function psi is equal to 0. This is the point A plus B. So, these are periodic. The uh, function actually repeat from here again. So, this is the periodicity. Periodicity of this crystal is A plus B. So, the wave function at this region and wave function at this region will be similar. Again, the wave function at this region will also be similar to this and this. So, according to Bloch's equation, I can write psi of a plus b that is the wave function in this region is equal to e raised to i k of a plus b into psi of 0. What was our Bloch's theorem? According to our Bloch's theorem we can write psi of x plus a is equal to e raised to i k a into psi of 0. 
this is uh, what we get from the blocks theorem so here just that our periodicity is a plus b our periodicity is a plus b so we have a uh, psi of a plus b is equal to e raised to i k into a plus b into psi of 0. So this is our periodicity. So uh, it essentially tells us that the wave function at this region is same as the wave function at this region. So let me equate these two wave functions or these two functions. So uh, before that to find that I have to first find what is psi of 0 so psi of 0 is the region this actually comes from the region uh, the first uh, psi of 0 belongs to the first region so find another. So, uh, I'm doing with the Bloch's theorem. So, according to Bloch's theorem, what I have is psi of a plus b have to be equal to e raised to i k into a plus b into psi of 0. But from the potential, draw the potential here. So, from the potential, what I have is my first region is a wall and with a length a and my second region is this and this is my x equal to 0 this is x equal to a this is x equal to a plus b now the v function at x is equal to 0 at this region will be same as the v function at this region so first i have to find the wave function at this region so wave function at this region will be psi first of zero so psi of zero will be again psi first of zero at the first region so i have this psi one equation of psi one here so when i put x is equal to zero what i will get is psi first at 0 will be equal to a e raised to 0 plus b e raised to 0. e raised to 0 is 1. So, it will be a plus b. Now, I can write psi of a plus b is equal to e raised to i k into a plus b into a plus b. Now, psi of a plus b. Psi of a plus b is this region. And this region actually belongs to the second region. You know, this is the point where the wave functions become equal. So, this point actually belongs to my second region. So, I can find the wave function at that region just by substituting a plus b to my existing equation. So, this psi of a plus b can be equal to psi of the second region at a plus b. Therefore, I can write this is equal to c e raised to i beta into a plus b just by substituting x as a plus b plus d e raised to minus i beta a plus b is equal to just carry over in this e raised to i k into a plus b into a plus b. So, what I have done here is from Bloch's theorem I know that psi of a plus b that is a wave function at this region will be equal to e raised to i k into a plus b and psi of 0. But I know that psi of 0 belongs to the first region and psi of a plus b belongs to the second region. So, I have just substituted those equations for psi of a plus b and psi of 0 
from the equation I have already derived that is psi of first region and psi of second region and use Bloch's theorem to connect those equations. So I have yet another equation here. Now I have one more condition that is not just the wave functions are similar their derivatives will also be similar that is psi dash of a plus b because the wave function is continuous the derivatives have also to be similar so psi of a plus b will be equal to uh, e raised to i k of a plus b into psi dash of 0. Again, the psi dash of 0 belongs to the first region. This belongs to the second region. Just that now I have to consider the derivatives of the function. So, derivatives. Finding the derivatives. What I will get is alpha into, I have already done this. A e raised to alpha 0. So, alpha 0 is e raised to 0 is 1 minus b into e raised to 0. That is essentially 0. Hope you got this step. I have already done this step in my previous. See, I have already had this step here in my previous text. Just substituting x is equal to 0. This term turns out to be 0 and this term turns out to be 0. And what I left with is alpha into a minus b. Again, in this region, I need to substitute all these x with a plus b and here my answer is and my answer is i beta into using this equation c into a raised to i beta a plus b minus d e raised to minus i beta a plus b will be equal to e raised to i k a plus b that is from here into psi dash of a that is alpha into a minus b. So, I have four different equation Two from boundary condition. This is my equation number one. I have equation number two. Again, two from my Bloch's theorem, equation number three and equation number four. I have four variables A, B, C and D. My variables are capital A, capital B, capital C and capital D. And I have four different equations. So, it is enough to solve. Uh, for, for, for variables. So, how can we solve this? We can solve this using matrix method because as you know that every equation can be written of the form some constant into A plus some constant into B plus some constant into C plus some constant into D. Right? Is equal to 0. I have 4 equations of this type here also. Uh, see, I have four equations of this type. No, sorry, these are my equations. So, I have four equations. Every equation carry three, uh, four different variables. So, I can bring all these to one side and write some constant into A plus some constant into B plus some constant into C plus some constant into D. This can be similarly the case for all these three equations. So, I can write, I can have four equations of these types. So, uh, so I have to solve these equations, right? The trivial solution will be A equal to B equal to C equal to D equal to 0 will be a trivial solution. But we are not interested in that. We are interested in the non-trivial solution. So, from matrix, I uh, hope you remember that if we need to find the non-trivial solution, then we will find the determinant of the coefficients. Hope you know how to do this. 
Let me give you a small example of two dimension. That is when we have some function a1 x plus b1 y is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y is equal to 0. These are two equations. Then to find the non-trivial solution what we will find is a1 b1 a determinant a1 b1 determinant a2 b2 is equal to 0. We will substitute and just find uh, this determinant equate it to 0 and find the solution. So, uh, to find the non-trivial solution, you have to find the determinant of the coefficient. But in this case, since you have four different variables, what you are going to end up uh, is with 4 by 4 determinant. So, your coefficients, so you have four different uh, variables. So, you are going to end up with 4 by 4 uh, determinant and this determinant have to be equated to 0. Solving this will be a tedious uh, uh, function but it is solvable. I am not doing it uh, here. Uh, you can also skip it for the examination too. But just know that you have to find the determinant of the coefficient and you know how to find the determinant of the coefficient. You know how to find uh, determinant of a 3 by 3 uh, matrix. Just like that, do it with the 4 by 4 matrix also. Now, uh, this equation on simplifying, on uh, finding the determinant and equating it to 0, my answer is cos k of a plus b. Uh, cos actually came from our uh, auxiliary functions e raised to i k a plus b. So, uh, the cos came from this function. Beta square, I already have betas, alphas, 2, alpha, beta. And sine alpha a, this came from the function e raised to i alpha a into sine h alpha a. This came from the function e raised to uh, beta a, uh, beta b because sine h this is a hyperbolic function so it came from e raised to beta e without an i this came from again the oscillatory function e raised to i alpha a and this cos h came from the hyperbolic function e raised to beta b so just uh, don't uh, want to confuse you right here on simplifying we will get this equation and you are meant to by heart this equation it is not that tough also. Cos k of a plus b is equal to beta square minus alpha square divided by 2 alpha beta into sin alpha a into sin h beta b plus cos alpha a into cos h beta b. So, we end up with this equation on simplifying. But this equation looks uh, much clumsy. So, what we will do here is we will look for a simplified model that is also using the blocks theorem. Uh, in the previous model, my issue was I had two different regions. I had a wall region and a well region, a wall region, a well region, etc. So, I had a wall region of length A, a well region of length B. So, I had two different wave function for first region and the second region and this is being repeated. So, I had four different boundary conditions and so on. So, this was a bit clumsy because I had two different region. So, in this simplified model, what I will do is I will reduce the length of this A. This length of A is reduced to zero. So, now I have no walls. What I have is just potentials. Because I have no walls. What I have is just potentials. And these are separated with the distance B. My A is reduced to 0. Now, I have no A. A is a singularity right now. And these singularities are... Uh, 
are separated by a distance d all my a's this will also come together all my a's are reduced to zero and my b stands and this will have a potential v0 moving in the x direction now let me solve for this function now if I solve for this function what I have is my potential is not continuous my potential now becomes a delta potential delta potential means I have a potential at one particular point only one particular point B only here I have my potential continuously changing from one point to another but at this region I have my potential concentrated to one particular point and this region is highly potential it has a very high potential and it is concentrated to just one single point uh, that is my potential will now look like just a singularity so this is my potential right now which extends again a potential again a delta potential And it extends with the distance b. So this is how my potential now look like. So I have a delta potential at every distance b. So my potential v is not just v0. I have to write it as v0 delta into x minus b. And this is the delta potential. Now I have to solve the Schrodinger wave equation. So the Schrodinger wave equation have to be found in this region only. So finding the Schrodinger wave equation at this region is pretty simple because I have no potential there. So my Schrodinger wave equation will become h cross square by 2m into d square psi by dx square with no potential. So it will be equal to e psi. I have already solved this. This will become d square psi by dx square plus 2m e by h cross square psi is equal to 0. I have already uh, equated 2m e by h cross square into beta square. So um, I can write d square psi by dx square plus beta square psi is equal to 0 since I have a plus sign here I am expecting an oscillatory function so psi is equal to a e raised to i beta x plus b e raised to minus i beta x where beta is equal to root over 2me by h cross square now we have found the wave equation we have only one wave equation not two now let us apply the boundary condition so the boundary conditions are we have our potential here let me redraw the potential again so we have delta potentials we have a number of delta potentials separated by a distance b so let me take one particular area as x is equal to 0 so when i take x is equal to 0 i can say that the function at x is equal to 0 uh, can calculate x is equal to 0 I have already a function for psi x. So it is a e raised to i beta x plus b e raised to minus i beta x. When I put x is equal to 0, what I will end up with a plus b because e raised to 0 is 0. So psi of 0 is a plus b. Again, psi dash, how can we find psi dash of x? Psi dash of x will be equal to i beta into i am writing from the previous equation i beta into a raised to i beta x sorry 
minus b e raised to minus i beta x. Hope you know how I got this equation. I got this equation from this only just derivating taking the derivative i beta will come out here minus i beta will come out and I have taken i beta as common. So I will be left with a minus sign here and this is my function. So equating it to psi dash of 0 will be equal to i beta into a minus b. So we have found what is psi of 0 and psi dash of 0. So using the blocks theorem we know that psi of b that is at this region the wave function have to be uh, continuous. At this region wave function have to be continuous and also we know that psi of b will be equal to some phase constant into psi of 0 from Bloch's theorem. So, according to Bloch's theorem, so from Bloch's theorem, we have psi of b is equal to e raised to i k b into psi of 0. So, psi of 0, what we have as psi of 0, we have calculated psi of 0, so that is a plus b. Now, this is our first equation. Now, psi of b is the region which is within this uh, first region that is uh, can be found from uh, substituting to our original equation, original equation down here. I can also find it by substituting to this equation. So, I can write it as a e raised to i beta b plus b e raised to minus i beta b is equal to e raised to i k b into a plus b. Now this is my first equation. Now I have to find the second equation. For a uh, uh, for a periodic sorry for a finite potential we know that psi dash that is derivative of psi dash have to be continuous. This was in the case of finite potentials. But here we have an infinite potential we have a delta potential. So in case of delta potentials for delta potential psi dash is discontinuous that is psi dash at a point say if this is point B then psi dash at this region Psi dash at this region slightly left, uh, sorry, slightly right to the region. Let me call it as B plus. Will be different from psi dash at this region, slightly uh, left to the region. Uh, let me call it B minus. So, in if it was a regular potential, we know that the slopes will be continuous, slopes will be the same. But in the case of delta potential, as I have already said, delta potentials very deep and very sharp. So, the uh, slope at the end point will be pointing towards this region and the just another point the slope will be pointing in the just opposite direction. So these two slopes cannot be the same at any cost. But if it was an oscillatory function, and see if this is a potential, for delta potential our wave function will look like, this is how the wave function will look like in a delta potential. So the slope of this point will be exactly in opposite direction. So there is a discontinuity between psi dash. Therefore we need to find psi dash at this point and this point separately. 
we can't just equate this uh, psi dash to be equal to same it has a disparity therefore we need to find uh, psi dash at different points as different and in higher classes you will learn how to solve uh, for these psi dashes so for uh, the time being let me give you the final result only this can be found uh, by integrating the Schrodinger wave equation and if I uh, integrating the Schrodinger wave equation using the delta potential once you will get uh, the psi dash so after finding solving I can find that psi dash of b plus minus psi dash of b minus that is slope at the region b plus minus slope at the region of b minus that is the difference between these uh, slope at these two regions is equal to 2m v0 divided by h cut square into psi of b this equation is solvable it is very easy we can just uh, do it by solving the Schrodinger, uh, just integrating the uh, Schrodinger wave equation once and you will get this but it is out of scope of oh, what your syllabus recommends so let me skip it here so uh, let me see what is psi dash of b plus now psi dash of b plus this happens to be in this region so psi dash of b plus from the blocks equation we know that it will be some phase function e raised to i k into this re, uh, uh, what happened that psi is equal to 0 so from blocks equation we know that psi dash of b plus will be equal to uh, psi uh, uh, from blocks equation we know that psi dash of b plus this will be equal to e raised to i k b into psi dash of 0 but we already have psi dash of 0 solved here so instead of psi dash of b plus i am writing e raised to i k b into i beta into a minus b minus psi dash of b minus psi dash of b minus is a function here i can uh, solve it just by substituting what happens to psi uh, dash of x instead of psi dash of x if i substitute b to psi dash of x then i will get psi dash of b minus so my equation is i beta into a e raised to i beta x uh, sorry i beta b minus b e raised to minus i beta b now equal to equal to 2m v naught by h cut square into psi of b so i have two different equations here from uh, that is from uh, one from the continuity of psi and another from the discontinuity of psi dash i have two different equations from the blocks theorem and two different variables a and b and two different functions so here also i can find the non trivial solution just by equating the coefficients uh, uh, just by taking the co uh, determinant of the coefficients and equating it to zero so on simplifying i will get a function like this and this is what i get and uh, on simplifying so this function actually tells me how the energy band arises so then uh, we'll see how this equation actually tells me how this energy band arises. Now I'm trying to plot this equation with respect to beta b. Now I'm trying to plot only the LHS versus beta b. Now if I plot 
the LHS versus beta B, what I will get is, I will get a function like it will start from very high, go very deep, comes up and its height reduces as it moves on. So this is the kind of function uh, which I get when I plot this function, this whole function with respect to beta b. Now see this is what I get when I plot my function with respect to beta b here and my function goes like this. Now my RHS is cos kb. So my cos kb can only have values from plus 1 to minus 1. So no other values are possible. So let me draw two different lines at plus 1 and minus 1. So whatever energies which is falling inside this is my energy function. Okay, uh, I was uh, trying to find the energy eigenfunction and eigenvalue. So this is my energy function. I'm finding its value. So uh, after Schrodinger wave, uh, solving the Schrodinger wave equation, what I'm ending up with is the energy eigenvalues. I'm trying to find the energy eigenvalues. So the energy functions, values which falls between the uh, 1 and minus 1 are feasible. This region, this region is the only feasible region. And the regions which are outside minus 1 as well as plus 1 are not feasible. That is the energy which is coming outside, that is falling outside the region uh, cannot be taken into account. Only the energies which falls within the region of minus 1 and plus 1 can be taken into account. Now, this uh, is a region cos, K, cos Kb, right? Cos Kb can be either equal to 1 or equal to minus 1 or any value between 1 and minus 1. So, the turning points are here at plus 1 and minus 1. So, if Kb is equal to 1 or cos Kb equal to 1, Kb can have value 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. And for cos Kb equal to minus 1, the Kb will have value pi, 3 pi, etc. Or if kb is equal to 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc., then k will have a value. k will have a value 0, 2 pi by b, 4 pi by b, etc. And k will have, when it is minus 1, k will have a value pi by b, 3 pi by b, etc. Now, so this, my first region can be equal to cos kb is equal to 1 and kb equal to 0. Maybe possibly this is kb equal to 0. So this will be kb equal to pi. So if it, this is kb equal to pi then this also have to be kb equal to pi. Or the region where k is equal to pi by b. Now this region is uh, have to be kb equal to 2 pi and again I have this region where kb equal to 2 pi. So see I don't have a continuity here. I have continuity from 0 to pi. Then I have a discontinuity and then it starts from pi to 2 pi. Again I have a discontinuity and again the bands starts from 2 pi to, uh, uh, to uh, 3 pi by 2. So uh, 2 pi to 3 pi. So this is how it arises. That is I don't have in case of free electron model what I have left with is a continuous energy gap. When I plot E versus K, uh, for free electron model, this was my function. But here, using Freund-Penny model, I am left with a function such that 
I have continuity from 0 to pi. Let this be k equal to pi or k is equal to pi by b. Then I have a discontinuity and my band again starts from pi to 2 pi. This region. My band again starts from pi to 2 pi and again I end up with a discontinuity and it starts from 2 pi to so 3 pi by b. So this is how my band arises. So Crowning Penny model actually tells me how the band arises or how there uh, becomes band gaps, how the band gaps arises. So these band gaps essentially arises because the wave function or the energy function cannot hold values more than plus 1 or minus 1. So plotting this over here, plotting E by K here, as you can see, because of symmetry, I have this in the other region also. I have already drawn it in first region. I have in other region also. So it is continuous from 0 to pi by a. So it from 0 to pi by a. Again in the other side, it is continuous from 0 to minus pi by a. Then you will have a discontinuity at pi by a. And it starts from pi by a to 2 pi by a. There you have an energy band. Again a discontinuity at this region and an energy band starts from 2 pi by a to 3 pi by a. And it uh, goes on in the two different regions. And this first region is called the first Brillian zone, the Brillian zone. And this region minus pi by a, uh, 2 pi by a to pi, uh, 2 pi by a, this region is called the second Brillian zone and so on. So this is what you actually uh, this uh, shows this shows you how this energy bands or the energy gaps arises in a metal so Cronin penny model along with the block theorem successfully explained how energy bands arises in a metal and it was uh, beyond a free electron model but it was essentially with the help of free electron model we have defined uh, the energy bands which is arising so in this lecture we have learned about the block theorem and Cronin penny model and explain how Cronin penny model effectively explains uh, the arising of energy bands and energy gaps between uh, the energy levels of an electron the conduction electron see only the conduction electrons in a metal so thank you